morning, class. Good morning and welcome to our midweek Bible study. Uh, so awesome to see you today. You know, guys, I, I'm just, um, we've been in John chapter 11 for six weeks now. And uh, I, I don't know, man, I just, I may be here for another year. I don't know. So uh, <laughs> I hope you'll continue to, uh, to tune in. And there's just so much here. The scripture is just so rich. I don't know how anybody can go through uh, a chapter in the Bible in, a, in one week or two weeks or three weeks. Uh, you, you know, um, again, it's just so much. And, and you know, the more you study God's word, the more he reveals to you. So, so more and more is given. And this is what they mean when they say the word is alive. It just keeps giving more and more. There's new life every time you read it. And, um, you know, um, God put a message on my heart this week, and I wanted to share this with you. Um, you know, I want you to know today that you are loved. Somebody needs to hear this. I'm not sure who it is. I know I need to hear it. You are loved. Um, you are so worth it. You are so important to God. Do you know that? Please know that today. You know, think about this. Would God put his Holy Spirit in something that wasn't worth it? Think about that, right? You know, I've said this before. I mean, God could have, God has mansions in the sky. He has cattle on a thousand hills. You know, and just think about this. Imagine God decides to set up a home within your heart. God says, I'm going to come and live inside you. Is this real estate worthy? <laughs> can you imagine how much he must love us? You know, can you imagine God calls his real estate agent and he says, I want to set up a home in John's heart, in Doug's heart, right? In Ron's heart, Lori's heart, Doreen's heart, Simone's heart, Lorraine's heart, you know, all of your names. I love you all so much and I miss you. But just think about that. He wants to set up a home in your heart. Isn't that exciting? I mean, to me, that is just mind-boggling. Okay, um, today's message is called The Promise of John 11.25. I don't think you've heard this message before any place. I certainly haven't. This is something the Lord gave me as I've been studying John chapter 11. So we're going to look at the promise of John eleven twenty five, and I promise you, it will change your walk with Jesus forever. Father, I just pray today that we could come to know the promise of John eleven twenty five. I pray, Lord, that that promise would be instilled deep in our hearts, that we could walk it out, that this promise, this gospel truth, Lord, could change, could change our time on this side of heaven and forever with you, Lord. God, give us ears to hear, give us eyes to see, and God, may our hearts be fertile ground today for your word. May your word be instilled deep in us, Lord. May it drive change in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, guys, turn with me now. We're going to go to John. We're going to start in verse um, verse 20, I'm sorry, verse 17, and I'm going to read down through verse 27. John chapter 11, verse 17 through 27, okay? Um, now, before I read this, let me give you a quick recap. Remember where, um, what's happening here. Uh, Lazarus uh, is in Bethany with his sister Martha and Mary. Uh, he's very sick. Jesus is on his way to see Lazarus. Um, what's happened now, by the time Jesus arrives, Lazarus has died. His physical body has died. Uh, we're going to pick up right there today as we learn about the promise of John eleven twenty five. Okay, verse 17. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb 
for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. Okay? When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my, mother, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection or at the last day. Okay, now let me stop there for just one minute before I go to verse 25. Guys, Martha is clearly upset, right? She says, Jesus, if you had just been here sooner, my brother would not have died. Right? And think about the apostles. The apostles are standing there wondering what's going on. Remember, Jesus waited, purposely waited, two extra days before he came to Lazarus. And the apostles still have no idea why. And now they see Lazarus is dead. They see Martha is clearly upset. Mary is not even there. She's back at her home. She's mourning the death of Lazarus. She can barely move from her bedroom. She's paralyzed from, from grief. You see, and the apostles are thinking, Jesus, why did you wait so long? It's too late. You've missed it. Now he's gone. Okay? Now watch. We're going to go to verse 25. Watch what Jesus says. And here is the promise of John eleven twenty-five. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. Okay, verse 26. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? He said to Martha. Let me read 25 once more. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life, the one who believes in me will live, even though they die. He will live even though he dies. Okay, let's find out what he means here. All right. And, and remember, Jesus is asking Martha, do you believe this? Do you believe? And I'm asking you today, do you believe? Do you believe in that promise of John 11:25 and 11:26? Whoever, okay, whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? I'm asking you today. Because it looks like they certainly did not. I mean, Lazarus is dead. They've given up hope. Right? They know a dead person when they see one, right? I mean, let's go back for a second to John um, 11, 11. Let's go back to uh, verse 11 here. Look, look what it says in verse 11, right? Um, Jesus said to his apostles, be long before they got to Bethany, he said, Lazarus is sleeping, not dead. So you see, Jesus never said that Lazarus was dead. He said Lazarus was sleeping, right? Okay, he also, look at, if you go to Luke chapter 8, verse 53, look what he said about Jairus' daughter. Remember when he comes to the synagogue leader's daughter, Jair, her, his name was Jairus, his 12-year-old daughter had died, and Jesus came, and look what he says. He says, she is, um, she is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. Okay, they literally laughed at him. You're a fool. You're crazy. That's impossible. She's dead. Jesus never said she was dead. He said she was sleeping. And what did he do? He rose her from the dead, didn't he? Okay. Guys, over the next couple of weeks, um, I would like to answer the following questions for you. And if you have any questions for me, please send them in. Um, when we believe in the promise of John eleven twenty five, 25, 
How does that change our walk here on earth? That's one question, okay? Um, the next question is, um, Jesus finally showed up at Bethany, and Martha had no idea what Jesus was talking about. Do we? Third question. Do we mourn the death, do we mourn death the way the world does? If not, why not? Okay? If so, why so? How does believing the promise of John eleven twenty five 25 give us peace on earth? Next question, how can we cash in on the promise of John eleven twenty five? 25? How does that become a reality for us? And the next question I would ask you is, are people raised from the dead today? Okay. You will notice all through Scripture, okay, that Jesus, uh, the Apostle Paul, the Gospel writer Luke, they never refer to death as actually uh, something final. When the physical body dies, all through the scriptures, they, they refer to it as sleep, okay? Charles Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon wrote this uh, less than a hundred years ago, or maybe a little more than that now. Guess what he wrote? Those that believe in Jesus Christ appear to die, but yet they live. They are not in the grave. They are forever with the Lord. They are not unconscious. They are, they are with the Lord in paradise. Death cannot kill a believer. Death cannot kill a believer. It can only usher him into a freer form of life. Okay? Do you know that, that every fear that has manifested within you is really nothing more than a fear of death? That's been proven over and over and over again. People say they're not afraid to die, but listen to me. We are. We fear it more than we need to. And I'm not saying we shouldn't fear it. And I'm not saying there's not such a thing as a healthy fear. But what I'm saying is when you understand the promise of John eleven twenty five, it gives you a peace that surpasses all understanding. How did Paul sing in prison? He sat in, in a prison in Philippi, and he said, Rejoice in the Lord always. How? Because, because he believes in the promise of John eleven twenty five. 25. He knows. He knows that his name is in the book of life. And he knows that death will happen in an instant, but he will, he will see Jesus face to face. And there will be no more death, no more suffering, no more sickness. That changes everything here on earth for you as a believer. We'll talk more about that next week, okay? Um, look what it says in Acts, uh, Acts chapter 7, verse 60. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Okay, this is the stoning of Stephen. Luke writes that Stephen fell asleep. You see, uh, again, it's it's all through the it's all through Scripture. Okay, um, if you notice, uh, look what the Apostle Paul says in First Thessalonians chapter four, verses thirteen through eighteen. But we do, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. Okay, he's talking about the dead. Okay, the dead will, will already be with God. Okay, even if Jesus came today, the dead are already with him, the ones who have fallen asleep.
I believe when we fall asleep in death, we will see him face to face. Okay. Um, so, again, it, it's all through the scripture here. So, um, I want to look at another, another scripture. Uh, you know, and again, if right here in verse 11, Jesus says Lazarus is sleeping. So, there's another, uh, another scripture. Uh, look what Jesus says to the thief on the cross. Okay, he says, I say to you, today will, you will be with me in paradise. I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Okay, now some people, uh, miss. I think this has been misinterpreted. There's been a lot of debate about what Jesus is saying here. Okay, let, let me read this again as how, as, as how I think it should be interpreted, and I will leave that to you. Uh, you can pray about it, but but here's how I interpret this. I say to you, comma, okay, take a deep breath. I say to you, pause, today, <laughs> today, today, you will be with me in paradise, okay? So if you close your eyes in death, today, you will be with Jesus in paradise. And, and look what he says here. He says in Luke 23, 46, and Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Okay? Having said this, he breathed his last. Okay? So Jesus, as God's Son, knew he would be spiritually present in the Father's hands at the very moment of his death. Okay? Not asleep in the grave. Okay? And, and you know... We have to remember, we serve a God of the living, not of the dead, right? Look what it says in Mark 12, 27. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, right? Okay. Do you believe, um, do, do you believe that God raises people from the dead today? You know, that's a subject that won't even be, that's not brought up very much. Many churches won't even broach that subject, okay? Um, but do you know, uh, uh, there was a, um, I, well, there are some documented cases, okay, uh, of people that who have died and come back to life. And the medical community has no explanation for it. As a matter of fact, since 1982, uh, there has been at least one documented medical case every single year where somebody has died and come back to life and there's no explanation for it. Um, there, was, there was, in 2008, there was a woman by the name of, of, of Velma Thomas, 59 years old, in Virginia, she was dead for 17 hours, guys, okay? They, they, they disconnected the life support machines. They unplugged all of the tubes. The IVs were taken out. Her body was washed. She was being prepared to be delivered to the funeral parlor, okay? No heartbeat, no brain activity, 17 hours. Her son, Tim, was praying fervently, praying, Father, show me something. And on the way to the funeral home, okay, Okay. This woman wakes up, and the first thing she does is ask for her son, Tim. Now, her son, Tim, will tell you when he saw her body, okay, her fingers were starting to curl. Her skin was hardening. She was blue. Okay, guys, she came back to life. All right. Do you know that the medical community has not been able to find an answer for this? But if you go on to Wikipedia and type in... Lazarus syndrome. That's what they're calling it. They're calling it the Lazarus syndrome. You see, guys, when man cannot find an answer for something, he has to give it a name. He gives it, he has to give it a name. It's an affliction or a syndrome. Okay, but at least here he's giving it the name the Lazarus syndrome. So they believe that Velma Thomas was dead for longer than anybody else, 17 hours. Okay. I, I, I am here to contest that because Lazarus was dead for four days. Why did Jesus wait four days? Well, because the Jewish people, many of them were very superstitious, and they believe 
that the, the spirit does not leave the body until after three days. Jesus wanted to make sure that there was no question, no doubt, Lazarus was unequivocally, unexplainably, unexplicably dead, and he rose him from that grave. Three simple words, Lazarus, come out. Amen. All right. I get just a little bit excited. I'm sorry. Um, so I want to talk to, I, I, I want to um, refer you to a reading. Um, there's a book uh, put out by uh, John Burke. Um, and I'm going to put John's book up here on the screen. Uh, there are thousands and thousands of case studies of people that have died and, and come back to life. Uh, many of them have uh, had to have have, have, have visited uh, heaven. Uh, there are people that have come back and have met their relatives. I mean, there there are. Um, God is speaking to us, folks. He is speaking to us. This is His holy word. Okay, this is His holy word, and this is all that matters. I'm not trying to tell you today that that there's a book out there that's gospel truth. I'm not trying to tell you this anything on the internet that's gospel truth. This is the word of God. This is where we go. This is what we read and feed on daily, right? But there is evidence, Lord, God, that I believe the Lord is giving us because we are a stiff-necked people. <laughs> but he's trying to show us that the promise of John 11:25 and 26 is real. It's a truth. And I pray, Father, I pray today that everybody within the sound of my voice will realize the promise and the truth of John eleven twenty five 25 and 26, Lord. I thank you, God, for this time. And Father, if there is anybody within the sound of my voice today that has never said yes to Jesus, may today be that day. Follow me in this simple prayer. Dear God, Today I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior. Today, Jesus, I give my heart to you. I ask you for forgiveness of my sins. And I ask you, Jesus, for the free gift of Holy Spirit. Lord God, please today, come into my heart, be my Lord, and be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.